All right, my friends, we're gonna learn a little algorithm for solving the three equations for three unknowns. Um, so you have three uh, independent equations for three variables, x, y, and z. Um, and so a little algorithm goes like this. What you do is you just peel off the coefficients of the um, variables. So first we have a coefficient of three, uh, then we have a coefficient of two, and then a coefficient of one. Um, and we'll pull off a 6 from the next one, a negative 2 from the next row, and a 1 from this row. And then we'll pull off a 1, 1, and a 1. And what we're doing here is we're going to write a little shorthand for multiplying what's called a matrix by the variables x, y, and z. So the way you multiply matrices, right, it would be like 3x plus 2y plus 1z, okay, equals, and then that from multiplying these together, you would get negative 6, and then you'd have 6x minus 2y plus z equals negative 1, and then you just, so you just copy down the, the number over here. Okay, now what you'll see sometimes is for shorthand, um, people will leave off the x, y, z, and so they'll kind of write it like this. They'll say 3, 2, 1, and then maybe put a line for the x, y, z, and then over here they'll put negative 6. You just recopy all these things, so basically with a line representing the, um, the x, y, and z. Here you have 6 minus 2, 1, and then 1, 1, 1, like this. Okay, so all we're going to do is with each row of this um, this matrix, what you can do is you can you can multiply uh, just like you can multiply any equation by a you know by you can multiply both sides by a number by a scalar. Um, you can add any two equations together, and you can multiply any one equation on both sides by a constant. So we're just gonna we're just gonna do that with these rows, and really that's the same as doing that with these. Um, with a full equation. It's just this is a different little notation for it. Um, and so the goal actually in, in doing this, in adding equations together and multiplying them by scalars, is to try to get these bottom three, this, these three numbers in the corner to be zeros. And I'll show you why that is in a, in a moment. Um, it makes it easy to solve the, uh, for the three variables. Um, so our first little move um, one thing, you know, if one thing that we could do, for example, to get a, um, a zero here, let's say get rid of this six, is multiply the first equation by negative two and then just add it to this one. Okay, so just to keep track of what we're doing, I'm going to basically say negative two times the first uh, equation and then I'm going to add it to the second. So that's a move that I'm going to do to get a zero here. Um, so what we'll do is, yeah, let's just copy it down. So the top row here, will, again, will still be 3, 2, 1, line negative 6. And then, like I said, I'm going to take negative 2 times the first one and then just add it to the second. Okay, so negative 2 times this would be uh, negative 6, and then adding it to that would give you a zero. And negative 2 times this would be negative 4, and then adding it to that would give you a negative 6. And negative 2 times this would be negative 2. Uh, negative 2 plus 1 would be negative 1. And negative 2 times negative 6 um, would be positive 12. And then adding that to negative 1, um, adding that to negative 1 um, would be positive 11. And then, um, so then what I would also like to do is, well, let's try to punch out one of these. Um, so let's see, what, it, what I could do is I could multiply this equation by negative 3 and add it to this one. So with this bottom row, what I'm going to do is say negative 3 times the third row, and then I'm going to add it to the first. So that's what I'm going to do. So if we go negative 3 times 1, that's negative 3, and then adding this to it would give you a 0 here. Negative 3 times this gives you negative 3, plus 2 will give you negative 1. Negative 3 times this gives you negative 3, plus 1 gives you negative 2. Um, negative 3 times negative 2 um, would give you positive 6, and then adding that to negative 6 gives you a 0 here. Um, so I'm almost done. I, if I can just uh, 
uh, remove this negative one and basically change it into a zero by, again, multiplying another row by a scalar and maybe adding it to this one, um, then perhaps I can turn that, that negative one into a, into a zero to kind of um, get all zeros in this bottom corner here. And so what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, I guess I will multiply this bottom equation let's say the um, this one I'm going to multiply by negative six and add it to this one so again what I'm just what I'm going to do is I'm going to say negative six times the third and I'm going to add it to the second and if I do that that should get rid of the um, the negative one here um, so let's go for it um, so maybe I'm going to move that um, move that here so it's easier to follow. All right? So let's go for it. So we'll just kind of recopy this down. We've got uh, 3, 2, 1. We've got our line. We've got negative 6. We've got 0, um, minus 6, minus 1. And we've got an 11. And then I'm going to do this operation on the... So negative 6 times 0... Um, gives you a zero, and then adding that gives you another zero, which is what we wanted. Um, negative six times negative one gives you a positive six, plus negative six does give you the zero that you wanted here. Um, negative six times negative two gives you positive 12, um, <clears throat> and then minus one will give you minus, um, will, will give you 11, sorry. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have negative six times zero, plus 11, so we get another 11 down here. So now I've succeeded in making this bottom corner all go to zero. So this is called um, uh, being in uh, reduced row echelon form, it's called, if you have all zeros down here. And the reason this works is if we, if you expand back out into like what this little bar means, um, basically what we've learned is this top row is three, two, one, um, we have uh, 0, minus 6, minus 1, 0, 0, 11. And if you remember, there's like an x, y, z here equals, and then this is minus 6, 11, 11. Well, so now what we can do is just by looking at what this means, you can see this bottom equation is 0x plus 0y plus 11z equals 11. Well, so from the from looking at the very bottom, we basically have 11z equals 11. Well, we just learned what z is, so therefore uh, z equals 1. Okay, so we got that guy. From the row above, we've got uh, 0x uh, minus 6y and then minus 1z uh, equals 11. But we already know what the z is, um, so z is 1. So we have minus 6y um, minus 1 equals 11. Um, well, so then, um, so what that means is we just learned then, therefore, we've just learned what the, um, what the y is. So y apparently is negative 2. All right, and then finally, well, so now we know what z and y are. Well, then we can just really plug into any of the other equations. But, but for example, to just continue with the pattern, we can use this. Um, this top one. Um, so let's just wrap this up. Um, and so what we now know is that 3x uh, plus 2y plus z equals negative 6. So 3x plus 2y um, plus z equals negative 6, um, which is also equal to, well, let's go ahead and plug in what we do know here. Well, so we have 3x because we don't know the x yet. Um, well, plus 2 times negative 2 well, that's really the same as minus 4, and then plus z, or plus 1. So we have negative 6 uh, equals 3 times a mystery number um, minus 3. So 3x minus 3 is minus 6. Um, so that's going to give you an x equals negative 1. Um, so it looks like we've done it. Um, we've found for that system of equations, this original system of equations, uh, 3x plus, plus 2y plus e is minus 6, and so on, these three equations. We have found our solutions. 
Um, so finally, for this system, um, what we learned is that x, y, and z are equal to um, negative 1 for the x, uh, negative 2 for y, and 1 for z.